Hi everyone. Today I have the great pleasure of reading an article by my very good friend Dana Emanuel, ex-paranormal investigator from Florida, USA. It's her very first article printed in a newspaper here in the UK in their October issue. So this is the Good News newspaper and it's sold throughout the UK. It is distributed to about 50% of the prisons in the UK. It's sold in Christian bookstores. People subscribe to it and it's also online. This is the first time Dana has had one of her articles printed in a paper um, and she even has a mention on the very top of the paper in the border and it says Ghost Hunter Comes Clean, Paranormal Investigator Reveals All. So I'm just going to read it out to you. Just a short article. Ghost Hunter Spooked by the Real Supernatural. Firstly, I'd like to say the title is kind of interesting because, in actual fact, Dana is now a deliverance minister, like myself, and casts out evil spirits. So you can see just how much her life has changed and how much God has transformed her. Ghost hunting reality series have become popular TV shows despite accusations of fakery. But Dana Emanuel knows the truth behind ghost hunting. A highly successful paranormal investigator across Florida for 15 years, Dana has lifted the lid on her experiences. Whilst TV and movies will once again focus on ghost stories this Halloween, Good News conducts its own investigation into why she abandoned her passionate work almost a decade ago. Deemed an authority on the supernatural, Dana led her own Ghostbuster style team, but had nagging doubts about the spirits and terrifying attacks on her family, she turned her back on her activities. Paranormal Interests Dana admits she's been interested in the paranormal, ghost stories, scary movies, UFOs, the whole lot, as far back as she can remember. And although she'd gone to church most of her life, Christianity was very much on the back burner. My involvement in the occult shows I wasn't actually a Jesus follower. As a young adult, Dana moved in with her grandmother where she personally witnessed the sounds of footsteps walking up and down the hallway and my grandmother's music box would start playing on its own. Then, I had an experience that would truly convince me that the paranormal supernatural was indeed real and that there really is a spirit world. Awoken by noises from the kitchen on several occasions, I would get a very eerie feeling, sensing a dark presence. Then Dana saw a kitchen chair move away from the table and slide across the floor all by itself. Um, it's so cold here, my eyes are watering. <laughs> I jumped up and ran out the door. Her husband, Hugh, reassured her that the harmless spirit haunting the house was most likely that of her late grandmother, grandfather watching over her dear grandma. Fascinated, Dana now read everything she could find on earthbound spirits and even visited graveyards to hunt for ghosts. Hence why we came here because of the ancient graveyard. On the first night we actually got a very compelling photo of what appeared to be a full-bodied apparition and the voice they heard convinced her it was indeed the earthbound spirit of a man in a nearby grave. She loved the thrill of the hunt. The more evidence I collected from investigations, the more I became obsessed with the paranormal. And as we know, that's quite common for folks involved in that. 
I speak from experience as well because I am an ex-spiritualist. Dana joined Paranormal Community websites, eventually starting her own research group. We would investigate people's homes and public places that claim to have paranormal activity. Yet, deep down, Dana still wondered if the hauntings were in fact demons masquerading as the departed spirits of our loved ones. But Dana carried on, telling herself that she was helping others. Well-founded fears. But after seeing the so-called spirit of a sweet, innocent little girl throw a man into a wall with great force, she began to realise her fears were well-founded. She also received a disturbing call from her husband Hugh back home, telling her a basketball had rolled around the house on its own through different rooms, stopped stopping in the same spot it started from. Yet her obsession only became worse as she spoke at conventions, showing footage of the man being hurled into a wall. She even spoke of the dangers of paranormal research, advocating ghost hunting safety. But audiences didn't know of the doubts in Dana's own mind. Just want to interject here, as an ex-spiritualist myself, it is actually common for ghost hunters, mediums and so on to, to have such things happen in their own homes and to even be attacked by spirits and so on and yet they don't tell the public this, they don't tell their clients or their students that they are teaching um, ghost hunting skills too. I could give umpteen examples but one that comes to mind Back in the day, there was a Professor Archie Roy, who was the president of the Scottish Cyclical Paranormal Society. I can't remember what it was called, and that was at Glasgow University. I knew him personally, my mother knew him personally, and he indeed was having such problems in his own home. I now know his son, who became a Christian, and he remembers that going on in his own home, and yet the average medium who knew him was not aware of that. It had not come to my full knowledge yet that all these spirits lie about their true identity. We already knew sometimes these demonic spirits will mimic a dead loved one. So why was it so hard to accept this maybe always be the case? Even as Dana prayed for truth, read the Bible and watched videos of former occultists, her husband Hugh was tormented by a woman in a dream and even suffered physical attacks by the spirit. The last straw was when her four-year-old grandson was left terrified and confused on seeing an apparent monster. She and her husband Hugh visited church. Leaving the occult. On hearing the minister say she had to stop her occult activities, she instantly knew this to be true. I made the decision to repent and truly turn to Jesus and live for him. From that moment on, my eyes were truly opened and I could see all the deception. After our deliverance from this evil, all paranormal, paranormal activity and attacks stopped. I just want to interject there, there's a few scriptures that come to mind here that Dana and I tend to use a lot in our shows, TV, radio shows and so on. One being um, the scripture about it's not surprising because Satan himself even masquerades as if an angel of light. These spirits can indeed morph into various forms and convince you that it is your dead relative and so on. Um, so of course that brings the question, well, are some of these our dead relatives? No, because the Bible actually shows that once a person dies, they cannot be earthbound. There is no such thing as an earthbound spirit. When someone dies, they either go to heaven or hell. There is a verse in the Bible, of course, that says, um, upon dying the person, it is appointed for man once to die, and then the judgment. There's so many scriptures we could mention to, to prove um, the reality of this. And if you are a Christian and you're wondering about it, think of it this way as well. In Deuteronomy, of course, the famous chapter 18, where it talks about various occult activities, witchcraft, 
uh, seeking mediums, seeking to speak to the dead and so on. It says this is an abomination and quite rightly so because God knows they are evil spirits um, masquerading and deceiving you. And he does not want you to be deceived by evil spirits. He wants you to know the truth. Now, of course, this opens a whole can of worms as, as we know. But again, um, you see throughout the Bible, none of the, the people of God had a ministry to earthbound spirits or so-called dead people. You did not see anyone in the Bible telling a so-called ghost to go on towards the light. Um, Jesus himself, the disciples, the apostles, they never had a ministry to so-called ghosts. Therefore, why? Because it's a, it, is a, it is a lie. Yes, we can cast out demons and Dana and myself and others do that. And we do indeed. On many times you we can go to someone's house where they think it's a ghost and we will show them in reality that it is a demon and not a ghost. That can happen where the figure will morph into a ghost when you challenge it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to show its true colours. Again, ample evidence that this is um, a fact. So, where was I? Dana reflects, before then I didn't have a true relationship with Jesus. I knew of him, but I did know him. But now I've learned to put all my faith in Jesus. She not only reads the Bible, but applies it to her life. Mm -hmm. To finish, I have a huge burden for and pray with precious people who've also made the decision to leave the old cult and a life of sin and to turn to Jesus. Dana has shared her story on radio shows and podcasts and at churches. She's prayed for many people caught in the web of deception in the old cult and new age. The 53-year-old has also launched a podcast with fellow ex-occultist Laura Maxwell, that's me, who was featured in Good News two years ago. Now you can check out Dana Emanuel's website and her YouTube channel. You can check out some interviews I have done with her over the past several years as well on my YouTube channel. And please share this with anyone you know who is um, interested in these things. And as we know this year, 2020, one of the concerns Dana and I have is that due to COVID and, and so on, many people are confused, searching for answers, etc. And may well consult a medium, a psychic, a tarot card reader, looking for answers at this time. Um, and of course, we do strongly feel that that is a highly dangerous thing to do. Um, also, leading up to Halloween, you're going to have more people perhaps doing occult type things in their own homes simply because of lockdowns worldwide due to COVID. The people might play a Ouija board for the first time just because they can't get to their normal Halloween type party. So again, um, quite a critical point we feel with regards to the occult um, worldwide in our, in, our, in our culture. So thank you so much for watching today and please do share this with your friends and God bless you. So we have come to Berwickshire for an October break and that is at the borders between Scotland and England. So the original um, church here was built in the 7th century. It has a very chequered and bloody history actually. A few of the well-known people involved. St Augustine founded it in the 7th century. We have, as I say, quite a history. You can check it out online. Oliver Cromwell destroyed it in 1650. You had other well-known people such as Mary Queen of Scots who was a regular visitor. Um, I read a little bit about it online. It has also um, got influence from the Knights Templar, Masonic Lodge and so on, and indeed some of their graves are still here.